So, let's start. Number 10. The Stanford Prison Experiment, when roleplay went too far. In 1971, psychologist Philip Zimbardo wanted to study how power affects behavior. To do this, he transformed the basement of Stanford University into a fake prison. He recruited 24 healthy male students, randomly assigning half to be guards and half to be prisoners. The guards were given uniforms, batons, and mirrored sunglasses. The prisoners were stripped, given smocks, and locked into cells. The plan was to run the experiment for two weeks. It didn't even make it to the sixth day. Almost immediately, the guards began abusing their power. They forced prisoners to do humiliating tasks. They shouted, insulted, and deprived them of sleep. The prisoners, once normal students, started breaking down. Some cried uncontrollably. Others showed signs of extreme stress and depression. The shocking part was how fast everything escalated. Ordinary students, when given authority, became cruel almost overnight. Even Zimbardo himself, acting as the prison superintendent, became caught up in the illusion, ignoring the suffering because he was too invested in the experiment. It took an outside researcher, horrified by what she saw, to convince him to shut it down. To this day, the Stanford Prison Experiment is a chilling reminder of how fragile human morality can be under the right circumstances. People like to think cruelty belongs to others, but the study suggested it could emerge in anyone. And the thought that kindness and cruelty might just depend on a uniform is what still terrifies researchers today. Number 9. The Monster Study Teaching Children to Stutter In 1939, a group of orphans in Iowa became the subjects of one of the cruelest psychological experiments ever conducted. Speech pathologist Wendell Johnson and his graduate student Mary Tudor wanted to test a theory. Could stuttering be created in children simply by making them believe they had it? They took 22 orphans and split them into groups. Some were praised for their speech, told they were doing well. Others, even if they spoke perfectly, were criticized harshly. They were told they stuttered, that something was wrong with them, and that they needed to fix it. The results were heartbreaking. Children who had spoken normally before became anxious, withdrawn, and some actually developed speech issues. And some carried the psychological scars for life. The experiment remained hidden for decades because of its ethical violations. When it was finally revealed, the state of Iowa issued an apology and financial compensation to survivors, but the damage could never be undone. Researchers today look back at the monster study with horror. It's a brutal example of how science, when unchecked by ethics, can destroy lives. The real lesson? Words can wound just as deeply as physical harm, especially when spoken to children who trust the adults around them. Number 8. The Milgram Experiment. Obedience at any cost. In the early 1960s, psychologist Stanley Milgram set out to answer a disturbing question. How far would ordinary people go if ordered to hurt someone? The experiment was simple. Volunteers were told they were helping with a study on learning. They sat in front of a machine with switches that delivered electric shocks. On the other side of a wall was another participant, the learner. What the volunteers didn't know was that the learner was an actor. No shocks were real. But each time the learner answered a question wrong, the volunteer was instructed to deliver a shock. With every mistake, the voltage increased. The learner began to scream, beg, and eventually fall silent. The authority figure in the room calmly told the volunteer, please continue. And shockingly, most did. Around 65% went all the way to the maximum voltage, believing they had possibly killed someone just because a man in a lab coat told them to. The Milgram experiment revealed something terrifying about human nature. Most people will obey authority, even when it means harming others. For researchers, it was disturbing proof that cruelty isn't just about evil people. It can emerge from obedience, from the simple desire to follow orders. That conclusion still rattles psychologists today. Number 7. The Little Albert Experiment, Creating Fear in a Baby In 1920, John B. Watson and Rosalie Rayner at Johns Hopkins University carried out an experiment that makes people cringe even today. They wanted to prove that fear could be conditioned that is taught to humans the same way Pavlov conditioned dogs to salivate at a bell. Their subject? an infant known only as Little Albert. At first, Albert was calm and curious. Researchers gave him a white rat to play with, and he showed no fear at all. But then, the experiment turned dark. 
Every time Albert reached for the rat, Watson struck a metal bar with a hammer, producing a loud, terrifying noise. Soon, Albert began crying at the sight of the rat, even when no sound was made. It didn't stop there. Albert's fear spread. He became frightened of anything with fur. Rabbits, dogs, even a Santa Claus mask with a fluffy white beard. A child who once played happily now cried at ordinary objects. The worst part? The experiment ended without deconditioning him. No one tried to undo the fear they had deliberately created. Albert was sent back to the orphanage, his fears unresolved. Historians later tracked down records suggesting the boy may have died young from unrelated illness, meaning he never escaped what the experimenters did to him. Today, the Little Albert study is one of the most infamous examples of unethical research. It showed how easily fear can be planted in the human mind and left researchers haunted by how casually innocence was sacrificed in the name of science. Number six, the Unit 731 Experiments. Science turned into horror. During World War II, Japan's secret biological warfare program known as Unit 731 carried out experiments so horrific that they remain difficult to even describe. Hidden in Manchuria, this unit of doctors and scientists conducted research on prisoners of war and civilians, all without consent. Test subjects were deliberately infected with plague, anthrax, and cholera. Some were dissected alive, without anesthesia, so researchers could study the effects of diseases on living tissue. Others were exposed to frostbite until their limbs froze solid, then thawed repeatedly just to observe the damage. Prisoners were tied to stakes and used as targets for grenades and flamethrowers to measure injuries. Still others were deprived of food or water in long, cruel endurance tests. The data was meant to help Japan develop more effective weapons. The horror of Unit 731 was buried after the war, with many of the scientists granted immunity by the U.S. in exchange for their research. That decision has haunted historians and medical ethicists ever since. For researchers today, Unit 731 is more than a cautionary tale. It's the darkest reminder of what happens when science serves cruelty instead of humanity. These were not random acts of violence, they were methodical experiments designed by educated professionals. And that fact, that intellect was used to perfect suffering, is what terrifies most. Number five, the robber's cave experiment, how easy it is to create hate, in 1954, psychologist Muzaffar Sharif wanted to study how groups form conflict. He recruited 22 boys for a summer camp in Oklahoma, dividing them into two groups without telling them they were part of an experiment. For the first week, the groups lived separately, bonding over camp games and activities, then Sheriff brought them together and things turned ugly. The boys were pitted against each other in competitions, tug of war, baseball, treasure hunts, the winners got prizes, the losers got nothing. Almost instantly, the rivalry turned into hostility. The boys insulted each other, raided cabins, burned flags, and even armed themselves with sticks and rocks. Ordinary kids transformed into bitter enemies, all because adults created artificial divisions. The shocking part was how quickly hatred took root. These were not bad children, they had been strangers just days before. But with the right push, they saw each other as the enemy. Sheriff later tried to reverse the hostility by giving the boys shared problems they had to solve together, like fixing a broken water supply. Cooperation slowly reduced the tension, but the damage was done. The experiment revealed something chilling, that human conflict doesn't need deep history or serious reasons. It can be manufactured almost instantly with nothing more than competition and group identity. For researchers, the robber's cave study is both fascinating and frightening. It proved that division is disturbingly easy to create and that the line between friendship and hatred is much thinner than we'd like to believe. Number four, the Aversion Project, Medicine as Punishment. In apartheid-era South Africa, the military carried out a secret program known as the Aversion Project. Its goal was to cure homosexuality among soldiers. Instead, it created a nightmare. Young men suspected of being gay were forced into psychiatric hospitals. There, doctors performed chemical castrations, electroshock therapy, and even forced gender reassignment surgeries without consent. Drugs were used to induce nausea and vomiting whenever patients were shown same-sex imagery. The project was rooted in prejudice, not science, but it was carried out under the banner of medical authority. 
Many survivors lived with permanent injuries, both physical and psychological. Some never spoke about their experiences for fear of further persecution. For researchers today, the Aversion Project is terrifying because it exposes how easily medicine can be hijacked to enforce ideology. This wasn't fringe, as it was institutional, carried out by trained professionals in white coats. It serves as a grim warning. Science without ethics didn't just fail this time, it destroyed lives. Number three, Project MKUltra, the mind control experiments. From the 1950s to the 1970s, the CIA secretly ran a program called MKUltra. Its goal was as strange as it was disturbing, to explore mind control. Researchers tested drugs, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, and even electroshock therapy on unsuspecting people. Some test subjects were prisoners or psychiatric patients, others were ordinary citizens who had no idea they were part of an experiment. LSD was one of the main tools. People were dosed without consent, sometimes in safe houses disguised as brothels while agents observed their behavior. The program spiraled into chaos. Subjects had terrifying hallucinations. Some suffered long-term psychological damage. At least one man, a government scientist named Frank Olson, died under suspicious circumstances after being secretly drugged. When MKUltra was exposed in the 1970s, the public was horrified. Much of the documentation had already been destroyed, leaving only fragments of the full story. To this day, researchers don't know the true extent of what was done. For scientists, MKUltra is terrifying because it was government-funded, approved, and operated on a massive scale. It blurred the line between science and espionage, leaving a legacy of mistrust that still shadows research today. Number two, the Tuskegee syphilis study, withholding the cure. One of the most infamous medical experiments in history began in 1932 in Tuskegee, Alabama. Researchers wanted to study the effects of untreated syphilis in African-American men. They recruited hundreds of poor sharecroppers, many of whom never even knew they had the disease. Here's the horrifying part. Even after penicillin was discovered as a cure in the 1940s, the researchers withheld treatment. For decades, men were left to suffer while scientists observed the progression of the illness. Families were destroyed as the disease spread to wives and children. The study only ended in 1972 after a whistleblower exposed it to the press. By then, dozens of men had died, and many more had been permanently harmed. The fallout was massive. Public outrage led to major changes in medical ethics, including the requirement of informed consent for human experiments. But for researchers, the Tuskegee study remains terrifying, not just because of the suffering, but because of how long it went on for 40 years. It showed how systemic neglect and prejudice could warp science into something monstrous. The scars of Tuskegee still shape medical distrust today. Number one, the human radiation experiments. The Cold War was full of secret tests, and many involved radiation. Between the 1940s and 1970s, the US government funded experiments to see how the human body reacted to radioactive materials. The participants weren't volunteers, in many cases they didn't even know what was happening. Pregnant women were given radioactive iron in nutritional studies, hospital patients were injected with plutonium without being told, Orphans and children with disabilities were fed oatmeal laced with radioactive isotopes disguised as part of a breakfast study. Prisoners were exposed to high levels of radiation to measure long-term damage. The researchers often justified it as for the greater good, believing the Cold War demanded sacrifices even from the unwilling. The truth didn't come out until the 1990s, when declassified documents revealed just how widespread these tests were. Victims suffered cancer, organ damage, and genetic issues. Many never even knew they had been part of an experiment. What makes these experiments especially disturbing is how ordinary they looked. A glass of oatmeal, an iron pill, a routine injection, all things people trusted. But behind them was a hidden agenda that treated human lives as disposable. For many, it shattered trust in science and government alike. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.